Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight's program. I'm Young Park. I'm an other services librarian at the Chicago Public Library. Tonight's program is a part of the 2021 One Book One Chicago season. This year marks the 20th season of the One Book One Chicago, a citywide book club that brings residents together over a common book and theme. The 2021 One Book One Chicago selection by the Chicago Public Library is Bedrock Faith by Eric Charles May. Bedrock Faith tells the story of a Chicago neighborhood that were familiar to many of us and emphasizes the need for neighborhoods to come together to support each other. Please visit onebookonechicago.org to join 2021 One Book One Chicago discussions, events, and programs. Tonight, we are so pleased to welcome Jin Lee to the uh, program Korean American in Chicago. Mr. Jin Lee is a president of J. Lee and Associated, a consulting firm specializing in government and nonprofit organizations and the current elected school board member of Maine Township High School District 207. Mr. Lee will give us a lecture on Korean American in Chicago, how they community are formed, what they did for a living, and how they keep their cultural heritage, and where they have been moving. The audience can post their questions to Jin Lee. Please type your questions in the chat box, which is located to the right side of your screen. Mr. Ryu will post the answers after the program. Thank you to the C uh, CPL Foundation and other uh, supporters for making this season of One Book One Chicago possible. Also, this program is co-sponsored by CPL's Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Committee and thanks to them for making tonight's program possible. Please join us me in welcoming Jin Lee to the CPL virtual stage. Mr. Lee. Thank you, Ms. Young Par. Uh, first of all, I'm grateful that I was able to uh, receive an invitation from the uh, CPL foundations and the library foundation uh, for this uh, very important session. And I'm so pleased, uh, delightfully, uh, able to uh, join you to share the history of Korean American community uh, in perspective. Uh, but I think uh, the library is doing a fantastic job, Thank very you. educational, and hoping that through this kind of uh, uh, shared experience of uh, community histories, uh, that people, the community can uh, be more respectably learn more, more about the other community um, uh, and also uh, respectably we could all work together. Uh, so uh, again, thank you so much, very, uh, very much for the invitation. Thank you. So the first question to you is that, could you give us a picture of the first Korean American community in Chicago? And where have the Koreans been moved? Mm -hmm. Sure. So uh, the Chicago community uh, is quite unique. Uh, we are the uh, third largest uh, city in nationwide, uh, next to California and New York. So uh, Chicago ranked third largest city, as well as uh, the ethnic community involvement and, and also residence-wise. Uh, residence so Chicago Korean American community kind of had a long historical experience. Uh, maybe we can go all the way back to 1883 wow. when Chicago had a, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the museum ex uh, exhibition at that time. And Korea was, uh, even though it was kind of last minute, but were able, uh, were invited to, and they were able to participate. So uh, that's 
of, I guess you can say we can start it. And then along that line, early 1900, of course, a lot of um, uh, 유학생, educators uh, from Korea, they were able to, uh, came to study uh, and learning about the uh, US education system uh, and so on. So even though very small number of population uh, were slowly coming into Chicago uh, surrounding area. So uh, as we all know, in early 1903, of course, uh, uh, nice and size 103 members of Korean immigrants came to Honolulu, Hawaii, settled. And then some of them were able to move to California and then move to kind of like a Chicago Midwest area as well. And along with the line, as I mentioned, the educators, uh, students who want to uh, study more, uh, uh, they, uh, they came also. And then like uh, 50s after the Korean War, uh, we do see a, uh, uh, the many Koreans were married to uh, Korean War veterans. And then they uh, partially immigrate to uh, Midwest, including uh, city of Chicago area. Uh, and then uh, after 1964, five, uh, that the new immigration act opens, we have some more uh, larger members uh, were able to, family members, and were able to immigrate to the United States and also uh, along with study and also workman visa as well. I do see that uh, 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 in the beginning, uh, many like nurses, uh, participants, uh, laborers uh, came from German, uh, surprisingly and interestingly. Uh, they came to immig uh, immigrate to the United States, uh, to mainland, and then they came to Chicago as well. So along that line, um, we can presume, safely presume that around on uh, 1960s, 65 after, uh, we are beginning to see a uh, small growth of members. And those students were able to establish the community and uh, um, organize a like Korean American Association of Chicago, which is currently a like umbrella organization uh, organized in 1962. So something like that. And then even now, further 1930, late 1930, uh, one of the Korean church right here uh, was also a star with the, uh, one of the charter members, so-called from the uh, Korean American community as well. So uh, it are, uh, you know, brings all into Chicago area, surrounding area, and then uh, the population uh, steadily grow. So we are seeing um, a very nice population steady growth and I could say more of a 1970s and 80s, 90s and so on. Uh, myself personally, uh, my parents immigrated in 1975, February 15. Uh, that I do recall, still recall. Mm -hmm. uh, so what uh, at the departing at the Kimpo Airport fell over to our, our uh, cousins and other family members. And we thought that will be forever that we cannot able to see each other. So uh, uh, and at that young teenage, uh, teenager age, uh, we were, uh, uh, I think we took the Northwest uh, airline and arrive, uh, stopping by at the Japan Narita Airport. And then from there, uh, we had a flight to North, uh, Northwest to fly to Honolulu, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And very interestingly, and I think uh, at that time in 70s, early 70s, uh, who may be uh, uh, stopping to different port of entry, like in Hawaii, for example, my parents and uh, myself, including our family members received a immigration card at the airport. Mm. So that's, that's quite interesting. So we were able to receive that. And then from Honolulu, Hawaii, we took the flight to Houston, Texas. And then oh. from there, a two hour drive to a so-called Galveston, Texas, a small tiny tourist area. That's where uh, our family members kind of immigrate as a work uh, visa. So my mother uh, got as a work visa from uh, working at the restaurant as a assistant cook. And then my father uh, got a job and 
it's called a Kroger. It's like a big, huge grocery store still there uh, in Texas. Uh, and he was as a, like a, a bag uh, preparer uh, or uh, as a kind of job, first job uh, that I do recall. So in seven days, we had a, a nice members uh, came in. In Chicago, uh, at the time, maybe 5,000 to about 10,000 uh, Korean Americans members are uh, slow resided in Chicago area. And that's how we could say that uh, it start grow uh, and settling down in Chicago area at the time uh, that I, I may able to share. So could you tell us what part of Chicago they uh, settled down at the first? Mm -hmm. North side or south side, west side, what side of the Chicago? Sure. So at the time, um, because of any early Korean, now actually the Korean Americans was coming in nowadays compared to 70s, 80s and so on. Uh, there is a huge difference between the original, the old members like my parents and so on, at that time, the Korean government has a, a restriction on how much you can bring the dollar, US dollar into United States. Uh, per, I, from what I knew, maybe 2000 up to like 3000. But many, many members, when I talked to the that early immigrants, uh, they can only bring less than $1,000 or so. My parents, when they immigrated in 75, they could only bring $600 US dollars at the time. So uh, we are like, a, a, you know, a survive with, a, a, you know, bare hand pretty much. Uh, and we have, we really, parents really have to sacrifice their lives um, and work more than 15, 20 hours almost uh, to put a uh, bread and butter on the table. That's how uh, we had an early immigration hardship. Now the new Korean American immigrants is far different per se. Now, when they sell for, generally speaking, when they sell the houses or apartment in Korea, it's like more than, a, I heard like almost a million dollars or something. So when they sell the houses with that cash uh, and then no restriction on financial, that uh, restriction from the Korean government, they can bring all that money in cash and they can buy the house, the car, uh, you know, and living in a nice, comfortable uh, community per se. But in going back to early times in 70s, uh, at the time, so many Korean Americans, uh, uh, newly arrivals, because they didn't have the money and they have to start off from bare hand. So what they need is they're looking, they need to find a place where very affordable apartments. Second, the local transportation have to be, public transportation have to be really good. So a lot of buses, trains and so on. So that have to be uh, easy access for them to work, uh, you know, get a job and commute and so on. Uh, so, uh, so those are the kind of main things. So based on that, when we see it in early, I see uh, at the time, uh, people were kind of Koreans were immigrated to like a, a Lakeview area included surrounding on Belmont and Ashland area, Clark and Belmont so, somewhere down there. Uh, so they kind of establish the, the surrounding. And then like uh, slowly like 80s, uh, we do see that people, uh, when they also uh, own and run and operate the businesses in so-called right now Korea town, Korean community, which is in Albany Park, which Albany Park Library is uh, there. Uh, so that community, it has a very accessible on uh, apartment housing, because at that time, I do recall, maybe like a three bedroom was on about six. $600, uh, $700 or so. And we have a, a very decent uh, a public transportation, a Plasky bus, Lawrence bus, Kimball bus, uh, and then we got a Brown line, and then uh, easy access to 9094 highway in surrounding. So the people could able to come together and if they need to go to a work, which at that time, uh, many of them were working in uh, many factories. Uh, and uh, so that the surrounding became very popular and accessible for the immigrant uh, Asian American minority 
which including Korean American community were able to settle so that they, they did parents who were able to send the kids to at that time, Roosevelt High School, uh, and then uh, uh, San High School, Lakeview High School, uh, Lane Tech High School, uh, and then- uh, Amundsen maybe? Amundsen, Amundsen. Exactly. Yeah. And then uh, Mothers, and yeah. Mothers. High School yeah. and so on. So that was uh, like, a, at I that see. time, our teenager high school Korean community, hey, Hangouts as well. And then we go to Lawrence Avenue, went to a uh, Korean restaurant there, like Jajangmyeon, which is very popular at the time. Some of them was only $2.99 <laughs> uh, and, and so on. So uh, uh, it was very affordable. And then the reason, as I mentioned, uh, for the job uh, related, Koreans uh, did work for many manufacturing companies in the yeah. 70s and 80s. Yeah, mm -hmm. actually, that would be my second question. Can oh, you also okay. share? Yeah, can you also share the Korean American business sector in Chicago? So, what did the Korean Americans do for a living? And oh, then, yes. mm -hmm. are there any big changes over time? So if yes, yes. yes, why mm -hmm. has it been changed? Okay. Yeah. So as a, um, a Korean Americans, immigrants, when they arrive here, actually it's kind of somewhat, we could say unique community compared to other Asian commun community like for say Indian Pakistan community or Filipino community because their second language is accessible to English. Mm -hmm. So Koreans were not at all like Chinese and Japanese at the time uh, and so on. So even though the Koreans received a um, higher education in uh, their uh, motherland country, when they come here, that is totally, I would say, uh, unusual in a way. Uh, so because of the language hardship, because of the cultural differences, Korean, uh, early Korean immigrants really, really had a hardship uh, in, uh, in many perspective area. So uh, when they come, uh, they know that as a uh, person in charge, father, person in charge, uh, they get to put the, uh, you know, the, the, the bread and butter, Korean food on the table. So they really have to sacrifice, but in order to do that, they, they really got to find a job. But at that time, they really cannot find a job in so-called white collar job, government jobs at all because of the language barrier. Even though uh, the, uh, the immigrants had a, a good uh, qualified uh, educational degree and so on, but when you do an interview and so uh, 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 at the time, uh, they are pretty much got rejected because of uh, not able to communicate. So when they look at those factory at the time, uh, economics in the uh, United States in 70s, 80s were booming. And at the time, the manufacturing industry was uh, very busy. And uh, when they see hiring a Korean Americans as a assembler or uh, the laborer or uh, so-called inspection part departments, they see that Koreans are very hardworking, uh, diligent people. Uh, they don't talk too much either. And then while they're sitting on that position, uh, doing all that manufacturing products, doing all that inspections, uh, the, their inspectors, their supervisor were very pleased uh, and want to continue hire Korean Americans. So that at the time, the people who you know, their friends, Korean Americans, uh, they say, hey, come to uh, my XYZ manufacturing uh, factories. And they, when they recommend it, the boss, the, uh, the supervisor trust them. And then they were able to find an easy job regardless of language barrier and cultural differences. So they've been working there a lot. I do still recall when I was in high school summertime, I was able to work one of the, uh, it's called the Bodin Electronic uh, Manufacturing Company in kind of Edison Park area, uh, Edison and Western nearby, nearby uh, Lane Tech. But 
So I was able to uh, 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 work there for um, you know few sessions and uh, able to uh, earn some monies. Uh, so that was a quite a uh, experiences for me. So many Koreans were able to uh, work in a, a manufacturing job and so on. But as we all know, it is a quite challenge for uh, Korean bread earners to uh, uh, put the uh, right food on the table, uh, having families get together and try to send them to the better educational schools. Uh, so then they have to move to suburb and so on, and which, which is very expensive. And when you're living in an apartment, five, $600 a month, it was a quite challenge. So therefore they have to think uh, behind, behind the boxes, what could they do? So believe it or not, when you see a Korean American immigrants, a lot, of, a lot of other ethnic immigrants or mainstream sees that, oh, they are like uh, entrepreneurs. Um, they have a, a great, uh, mind, the thoughts, uh, a very ideal on the business uh, on matters and so on. But surprisingly, uh, when they start as a Korean Americans, they were not really entrepreneurs at all. So at the time while they're working, they really need to find some other better financial uh, access opportunity. That's where they uh, look into the eyes of a business uh, per se. But as we may know uh, that uh, many Koreans start off with the one individual, small, tiny retail mom and pop stores. Now, when you're looking at some other Asian community, other ethnic community, we are seeing, let's say Indian Pakistan community who owns a gas station shop, Dunkin' Donuts, the bigger ones, Chinese uh, American community, including Chinatown and others, but uh, big Chinese, uh, the restaurants, but you'd be surprised that I heard, we, we know that many Chinese community organizations put the uh, financial together to help assist new Chinese arrival, support financially, open their businesses and able to conduct and operate it. But at that time, Koreans were not that situation. Uh, barely we have to make our own, own money and with that uh, savings, uh, we gotta uh, open that business. But Gratefully, on that uh, 70s, 80s, in uh, Korea government, that time, the OEM business were very successful. The U United States manufacturers, they buy, uh, they make the products in Korea, like general merchandise items, bags, uh, uh, the accessories, uh, earrings, uh, uh, rings, or t-shirts, uh, including uh, the wigs, uh, beauty supply products, uh, and many other things were able to, and the Korean immigrants happened to have a uh, little better or much accessibility to purchase uh, those products from Korea directly. So they can buy in, bring it into US, California, New York, Chicago, and then they were able to open their small uh, mom and pop businesses in certain blue color area, Hispanic community or uh, uh, black uh, American communities and so on, including a lot of free markets uh, they were able to. So even the Yu Haksang, the, the Korean students who came to study. So during the daytime, uh, they go to schools and then weekend, they buy those products, go to free market and they were able to uh, earn uh, the financial access, uh, paid up the tuitions and so on. But eventually that, that business grow uh, bigger and bigger. They, many of them surprisingly, the, the people who immigrated 40, 40 years or so ago, they sometimes not able to graduate fully. And then they turn their career to a, this business venture and then we see so many uh, people in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, what do you call, uh, wholesale businesses, importer uh, businesses in uh, the wig, uh, hair good accessory industries, um, the general merchandise industries, the beauty supply in industry, the clothing industries, they are all over and they become very successful. So they were able to purchase 
uh, invested in real estate, send their kids to better school, better housings, uh, you know, by purchasing, a, a, you know, good, nice, expensive cars, and, uh, you know, uh, living a, a very uh, dependent, uh, so-called luxury life at that time. Uh, so that's how the Korean American became an entrepreneur. But of course, uh, we can share that, uh, of course, talk a little later too, how it changed. Now, uh, it has slowly changing to a totally different perspective on Korean American business per se. But now, uh, as many first generation Korean immigrants uh, who are still involving with the uh, business industries, uh, uh, along with, as I mentioned, the few industry uh, plus uh, like dry cleaning industries, uh, also one of the, uh, the biggest along with others. Uh, and they've been really, really work hard, but also the businesses with the various inclu uh, reasons, including the COVID, uh, the business is really down falling, downsizing it. And I see that uh, sadly, uh, uh, the many uh, are right, right now in retirement ages. They're like almost um, 70s and of course 80s. Uh, so they're folding their businesses as well so that the new second, third generation of Korean American uh, generation children who sometimes they wish to take over, but which they do not. So that's also uh, big changes in our Korean American community that I can share with. Thank you. Then what, uh, what does the second generation and the third generation of the Korean American do? Mm. So, uh, second generation, of course, uh, they are uh, really not having any uh, cultural differences and or uh, financial hardship as their parents, uh, first generation Korean Americans immigrate to, uh, you know, to the United States in general. So uh, they understand the culture. So they don't really have a problem um, going to school um, and experiencing the, uh, the American culture life because they are a so-called American uh, inside already. Uh, for the, let's say so-called, I don't know if uh, the audience may have heard like uh, 1.5 generation, second generation, third generation, but it's kind of unique. I think the Asian community may be the uh, only one who may use that terminology in a way. But for me, in a way, I consider myself as a 1.5 generation because I came here in teenage years. So something like that, when you're teens and, and so on. So at the time, uh, you have a challenge. Uh, you, when, uh, when I uh, went to uh, middle school in the United States in Galveston, Texas, uh, because of the, uh, the huge language barrier, I, I had a great stresses. Uh, and um, having a, uh, that's a totally different story too, but uh, um, um, uh, had a lot of stresses, a lot of challenges and so on. And it was uh, uh, quite a difficulty accomplishing, overcoming such too. And then, um, so the second generation means uh, uh, like my kids. Uh, right now I have uh, two children, uh, Jenna and Andrew. Uh, Jenna, uh, she's a, a, a school, uh, school teacher, math teacher, seventh grade in Bensonville. My son Andrew worked at the uh, uh, chemical research lab called uh, Aviv. So um, again, uh, they're into like a professionalism and such. So we are seeing a huge differences between our, uh, uh, the second generation and furthermore, they became a more of um, uh, becoming professionals uh, and working for the, um, you know, uh, white color uh, industries, companies and so on. Uh, but, uh, 1.5 generation and the first immigrant generation, of course, is totally different. Uh, and then we are uh, closely kind of like uh, communicating with or involving with the Korean American community, uh, including, uh, you know, in surrounding Asian American community as well. So basically what I'm saying is uh, the uh, 
second generation of Korean Americans right now is in uh, different stresses, of course, but they are in far better uh, uh, financial the cultural level that they are living in, and they should be really grateful uh, and never forget about their uh, parents and their grandparents uh, when they immigrate to the United States and how hard really they sacrifice their lives and how hard they really work. Because of them, they are here. Thank you. Okay, how do Korean Americans keep their cultural heritage? Uh, did they put an effort to, to share the Korean heritage with the non-Korean Americans? So yes, it's a very important uh, uh, as relate to uh, what we just uh, share the second generation Korean Americans and so on. The uh, sharing a Korean, their own ethnic uh, motherland, uh, the heritage is, uh, I have to say, it's very critically important. And not only a Korean American community, but any other uh, ethnic community as well. When uh, we are immigrate to United States, as we all know, this United States is a uh, uh, most definitely opportunity for better uh, living and better opportunity for the immigrants. Uh, and um, you know, people from Europe, um, uh, Asia, Africa, Latin, uh, South America, and so on. Uh, they are coming together and living in a uh, one, uh, you know, as in whole uh, space, so-called we call melting pot or salad bowl uh, and, uh, and, and so on. But as we all know, when we are into this melting pot, we don't have that identity. We don't have that tradition, culture, and so on. It's really difficult to uh, cultivate that unless you're parents or your grandparents able to uh, cultivate that and continue to uh, provide that to the younger generation. If the uh, generals, general other ethnic immigrant community who may not able to do, do that well, eventually uh, they're going to uh, lose huge on uh, their cultural perspective, identity, uh, and uh, this cultural perspective as well. So for the, thankfully for the Korean American community, uh, we believe strongly in this um, uh, identity uh, and the uh, uh, cherishing the cultural background as well, because we have, uh, you know, a, few, a couple thousand years of Korean, uh, Korean histories uh, uh, in background. So, uh, when we uh, came to immigrate, of course, it may be difficult to teach them, but uh, I think we were one of the first uh, actioner to create a Korean language school, per se, mm -hmm. in various churches. Um, at that time, in 70s, oh, by the way, 70s and so on, when newly arrived Koreans, we need someone uh, for the dependency. We got to find an apartment, we got to buy the car, we got to send us uh, kids to school, but we do not know how. There's, uh, and it's very complicated uh, uh, complication with the knowing the American culture, school education culture, uh, and getting a job too, interviewing, those are all having a many difficulty. So guess what? The Korean church, the, uh, the pastors, <laughs> been a do, doing a great job as a pastor, but also at the same time as a social worker, even though they don't have a proper license. So uh, it's interestingly, you've been hearing this a lot in people who immigrated in that early 70s. When they come, uh, first thing is that you kind of go to churches nearby. Then your pastor take you uh, to a finding housing in an apartment nearby, and then take your kids to a school for registration, and even sometimes finding a job uh, in various uh, uh, manufacturing factories in surrounding everything. So they, you'd be surprised in a way in early days, uh, you see a lot of Korean immigrants are uh, very religiously um, attending various churches uh, uh, and Catholics uh, too, 
Um, and uh, you, you are seeing many churches in our surrounding than probably many other ethnic community per se. So uh, that, that was uh, somewhat, but uh, through the Korean community leadership, churches, uh, language schools, uh, various organizations, we would like to continuously uh, partnership with the young professional second, third uh, Korean American generations and having their kids to come on board and we could able to teach them continuously history about the Korean culture, uh, history about uh, the Korean identity. So when they are became a leaders in our main society, uh, working in a, a professional industries and so on, uh, they will never forget about their ancestry. So we hope to continuously able to see that. It's a, a big challenge, but yes, uh, our current uh, generation, um, uh, um, the, the, uh, the members, including like yourself, Ms. Young Park, myself, including anybody else, will continue to put our effort to have a better, uh, uh, the uh, uh, building a better identity and cultural understanding about uh, their, uh, uh, the, the grandparents' uh, motherland. So we hope to do that. Thank you. Do we have a Korean town in Chicago now? Um, so, Yes, and still we could say yes, okay. in a way. Okay, uh, then so, my, yeah, then yeah. did you, we have uh, the Korean town in Chicago? So yes, we uh, off, uh, officially, uh, we could say we do. Um, here's then, the kind of yeah, yeah, Korean then what town. happened in the Korean town in Chicago in past decades? Okay, so uh, in from 60s, 70s and 80s, uh, like uh, in New York, Cal uh, California, New York, and so on, the, all the big cities, uh, when Koreans immigrate to uh, build, settle the nest uh, businesses and, and so on, uh, of course, you were able to uh, establish a, uh, the local spaces. Uh, and then you consider uh, uh, Chinatown, Italy town, uh, you know, a Polish community, um, uh, and so on, right? So yes, in Korean community too, uh, we do have it in, especially in Chicago area. Um, so when they settle 70s, 80s, the nice good numbers are coming in. And at that time, the, I do recall in, that was the 70s, uh, as you mentioned too, at the time, Korean leadership communities were trying to like settle in where in town, they should settle in as a Korean town. Uh, it's, it's unofficial, but at the time, some members were recommending actually where right now is the Indian Pakistan community, which is a, a Divan and Western that's our, that area. That was also a one of the potential location area that Korean community think this might be a good area to settle in and so on. But regardless, uh, they kind of like settled in in the uh, uh, Lakeview community and then officially kind of settled in in Albany Park community. So uh, officially they are considered as a uh, Korean community because nationwide, we, city of Chicago, uh, Chicago Korean community uniquely have a so-called Seoul Drive. Yes. Honorary Soul Drive signed the panel in posted in Lawrence Avenue, that's 4800 North, uh, that's Lawrence Avenue, in between uh, Cassie Avenue uh, up to uh, Pulaski, at least. Uh, that's more than 10 blocks, huge block. Because of the Korean immigrant sacrifice, uh, sacrifice uh, and they, uh, at the time, they became uh, one time, it kind of became a so-called a ghost town per se. Uh, and a lot of people, uh, they that was like a Jewish community. They moved out to a local suburban area, like at the time Skokie, Niles, and further uh, Northwest side. So the Koreans came in 
and they settled in along with uh, this, uh, they uh, purchased the uh, property as well. So in nine, I, I believe that's a 1993, I think it can be early, uh, at the uh, Kimbo, the Brown Line Station in front of uh, inviting the uh, aldermen at the time uh, with the Korean community leaders, uh, they uh, do the res uh, resolution and recognition of a Seoul Drive. So uh, we did that. So the sign's still there, but of course now after uh, Basin Census too, after 1980, 1990, 2000, 2010, and now 2020 Census too, based on, we still could say city of Chicago area, more than uh, 12,000 Korean Americans still reside. In. Mainly their older uh, age group, a lot of seniors, because we do have a lot of surrounding uh, Korean American senior apartments. Uh, uh, as you may know, Mugung Terrace, Koram Apartments, North Park Village Apartments, and along with others uh, more in Sheridan Lawrence area. So there's a senior apartment with a lot of uh, Korean Americans still reside there and uh, they have to depend on public transportation. So they take the buses uh, to commute. That's why you'd be surprised sometimes in this part, people in uh, like in surrounding like uh, 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 Sheffield uh, uh, in Sheridan somewhere, the seniors take the bus come to Albany Park Library. Yes, to they do. read the book, right? Yeah, yes. you see that. And then many of them came to get the uh, Korean pharmacy uh, treatments, a uh, acupuncture, uh, herbs. Uh, and then now, of course, many of them already has closed, but video shop, uh, renting Korean dramas. Korean seniors will love that. And they drive all the way to Lawrence. We have a more than 15 plus video shops. We have a more than almost 15, 20 uh, beauty salon in surrounding area. So people do come and uh, you know, uh, access to the restaurants and all the other things. But now, sadly, when you drive around Lawrence Avenue, you don't see much a Korean language business science. Maybe a few bakeries, pharmacies, uh, and uh, earth uh, stores and so on, uh, uh, you know, most of many of them have moved out to out of suburb, suburb area, which, uh, which we can share that too later. later. But right now, so per se, even though many Korean, uh, still uh, Korean seniors are residing in Albany Park, Second and area, surrounding uh, area. But because of the businesses and not uh, uh, energetically leveraged as what we have been seeing, so now it's a totally different picture. Uh, and then the parents with the younger children, uh, they no longer are able to send the kids to a surrounding area. So you don't see that at all. But you do see uh, any social service uh, agency operation related to um, uh, uh, seniors, uh, elders, um, they're very kind of active because of the uh, surrounding Korean American uh, community centers and apartments are there. As you may know, Hanur Alliance, uh, Center for Seniors. Um, Hana Center. Hana Center, Hana used Center. to be Korean American Community mm -hmm. Center. Sangnokhe, Korean yeah. American Senior Land and, and so on. Uh, uh, Korean mutual American, health. Yeah, mutual the, health. Yeah. Mutual health, the community self-help centers and so on. So in surrounding, we, used, we still have that as well. And then you still see a lot of wholesale businesses. Uh, of course, not only a Wilson and Clark, that's a huge wholesale town, but also in surrounding Albany Park, you still see a nice size of wholesale uh, import uh, trading uh, businesses on and operate by Koreans because that is a Korea town. So many business people from out of state, say from hmm, Ohio, Indiana, Milwaukee, or further Mississippi and so on, they don't have to have the direction. They say, oh, let me just go to Korea town in Lawrence Avenue nearby. As long as I get there, I can get my beauty salon, get my haircut, I can get 
uh, grocery shopping, I can get uh, video renting, which is not anymore. Uh, and then, uh, you know, able to do uh, everything else and uh, purchase a, uh, you know, the, the business supplies as well. So they seem to do that. And of course, nowadays, that also has a changes to a more north suburban area. Uh, I don't know if you want me to share that, yes or no, or later later uh, can be. <laughs> Okay, yeah. So one of the uh, famous st Korean street festival moved from uh, Rimmar Street to the suburb right now. So that shows that how Korean town moves. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah. Sure. As you just mentioned about the Korean festival, uh, if, if we can, uh, it will be nice to share that uh, maybe in next segment. Yeah, next session. Yeah. But however, uh, uh, let's go to the next session. So thank you for everything that you shared with us today. Could you level up today's lecture by talking about the future of the Korean American in Chicago? Mm, sure. So just very quickly kind of oversee the Chicago Korean American immigrant community really sacrifice and contribute a lot to our great uh, city. Uh, and then when we're looking at it, uh, uh, including like in early 1991, I believe, uh, we had a first Korean parade in so-called Korea town in Lawrence Avenue. Uh, and then in 1995, uh, in May 23rd, the one of the largest uh, Korean senior uh, US citizenship uh, celebration was held in Navy Pier downtown. We had uh, like 589 people, wow. seniors, all at once, one time, uh, came into Navy Pier and we were able to put all our oath and they became a United States citizens. So that is a great, huge accomplishment as well that none other ethnic community ever done. And then, as you mentioned, 1997, we have a K-Fest, Korean Street Festival on that Brimar Avenue. Uh, and we had that more than 20 some odd years. Uh, and, uh, and then I recall that memory. We really like to see that back because of the uh, Korean American leadership changes, we were not able to do that as an annually, but uh, uh, we hope to see that again to uh, bring everyone come together because that's will be a great opportunity at one place that during the weekend for people, the community members and non-Koreans and uh, they all come together, enjoy Korean authentic food, culture, entertainments, various programs and celebrations. So uh, we like to see that. And then uh, 2007 uh, in May, city of Chicago, uh, had built a sister city relationship with the Busan city, second largest city in Korea. So uh, we did that and then uh, hopefully educational wise, civic, uh, business wise, we were able to continuously uh, serve. Um, so overall, we are seeing a, a great strong growth of uh, diverse, uh, various Korean social service uh, professional organizations and entities, the businesses itself, uh, various cultural organizations uh, like Korean American Association, uh, Korean Women's Associations, including uh, and various uh, many uh, civic uh, leadership organizations as well. So we are uh, great to see that. But as you mentioned, what are we seeing uh, in the future? This is my kind of personal perspective. So it's no longer that we are seeing a Korean community slowly dying off in Chicago uh, surrounding area. Uh, and then even though they have moved to suburban area and we do continuously having a nice size of Korean American uh, uh, population in uh, uh, Chicago suburban area. For example, uh, probably uh, Glenview, uh, in based on 2000, uh, 2000 census, about uh, uh, 1866, uh, growth to about 2240 or so. Northbrook, 
Uh, we had about uh, less than 900 in 2000 census. Now it, it became uh, almost 1900, 2000 population. Um, Champagne, we have about almost 2000, but those are our students, so it doesn't count. Schomburg, we have almost uh, 1900 Korean population there. Skokie, used to be, uh, we had uh, more than 2,500, but they moved to a uh, different surrounding area. Now we have about 1770 population. Buffalo Grove, 1700 Korean population. Naperville, 1660 population. Vernon Hill, almost 1400 population, grow from 600. Arlington High, 1100 population, grow from uh, uh, the, 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 the 900 population. And then like Mount Prospect, Niles, Des Plaines, Long Grove, and so on. So we do see the nice number. But here's my concern and uh, worry. As long as we are not seeing more newly arrival Korean, uh, Koreans from Korea, so there will be less, less of uh, uh, Korean immigrants coming in. And even though they're coming in, they reside, move out to uh, New York, California. Nowadays, even Dallas, Texas, Georgia, San Francisco, and Virginia, and so on. So coming into Chicago is getting scarcity and scarcity. So when you are seeing the less population uh, immigrating, and because of the many reasons, uh, also the US government visa situation too, they have been very, uh, Conservatively discriminative, and they are not uh, now inviting any uh, immigrants. Now they become you have to be very really highly educated and particular field. Uh, you have to get a like uh, uh, like uh, what was it uh, college, university, uh, and up MBA degree per se uh, uh, in order to uh, immigrate or getting a better work visa and so on. So it's getting, going to be tough and tough for uh, general family immigration status uh, regards. So if we don't see that much, the number is going to be continuously shrinking. And like in Chicago, we are going to see uh, more of this shrinkingness. And then the second and third generation Korean American population, now they became a more of a professional white collar, uh, professional uh, society that they're involved with. So they no longer need to uh, live in with their parents, Korean parents, the Korean community. Maybe once in a while, they do come to shop, grocery shop for uh, three largest Korean owned super uh, uh, grocery stores like Asimar, a super H Mart, uh, Chicago food per se uh, in nearby. They do come you know, regularly or once in a while. But beside that, if we do not continue build this relationship, it will be much difficult. And then church, like, uh, like I said, in 70s and, and so on, early immigrants, when they come, they were able to uh, attend the churches and religious organization and so on. Now, the uh, so-called the second, third generation of Korean Americans, they no longer need to attend our parents' Korean language speaking, even though we do have a English speaking ministry there too, but they no longer need to go there attending that anymore. So we are seeing that less and less. This is a reason also another challenge, future challenge of the Korean religious um, uh, organization, churches and so on. We are going to see a huge downsizing on that uh, and they have to sell out uh, closing the uh, churches as well. So uh, along with this line, it will be a great challenge for our generation, Ms. Young Park and myself, that uh, uh, able to hold this continuation of this Korean American community, so-called. But uh, within say about 30, within 15 years uh, later, when you are <laughs> so very no longer, uh, I don't know, this could be, we are going to see like a more um, Japanese community that we are seeing in, city of, uh, in Chicago's surrounding immigrant community. Even though we uh, Japanese community is the fifth largest ethnic population right now uh, after us, uh, uh, six, I'm sorry, Korea is the fifth largest. So that uh, we, uh, they became melting pot. 
and then there is no longer a specific community itself sharing the culture and so on. It's a totally different matter. And I think the I am concerned uh, that Korean American community in Chicago surrounding, uh, if we are not continue recreating, recruiting and a new, we are not able to see a new arrival, uh, we are going to have a, a quite a, a challenge on uh, our Korean American uh, community in general. Thank you so much. Yeah. So we have to wrap up the uh, program, but I would like to hear more about the Korean American community in Chicago from you. So I hope we can make another chance. So thank you again for being here and then joining us tonight. Uh, thank you again to the CPL Foundation and supporters and the Asian American and Pacific Islander uh, Heritage Committee for all the wonderful work they do year round. I want to mention the upcoming program, 2021 One Book One Chicago season does go through the end of the year. So including Thursday, November 18, the Korean cooking in Chicago with a special guest, Beverly Kim, a James Beard award-winning chef and the owner of the Parachu restaurant and the Where With All, talk about the Korean cooking in Chicago. So you can find all the details at onebookonechicago.org. Please visit there. Thank you again, everyone, for being here and have a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the invitation. You guys are doing a fantastic job. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.